here are some uh, tips for using op amps for uh, audio surveillance applications between a 300 hertz and 3000 hertz. I'm going to start off with the standard uh, electric microphone element. It's a common uh, microphone element you find at places like Radio Shack or whatever. It is uh, biased off of a resistor. This resistor sets your uh, the microphone's impedance. It's usually between 2.2k and 10k. Um, on that DC bias line, you want to decouple it. We're going to be powering the circuit from a 9 volt battery, we'll say. So we have a 100 microfarad capacitor here. Then we also want to add a, a smaller value, about 100 ohms or so, in series with that DC bias. That forms an RC low pass filter just to remove any noise on that DC microphone bias line. We also throw a ferrite bead on there too, just to knock down any RF. Then on the audio output of the microphone, we want to couple that through a load of 10 microfarad non-polarized capacitor. We want to keep this value fairly large so it has a low impedance so the impedance doesn't add to our microphone impedance because uh, the higher the impedance the more the noise. So we want to kind of minimize our noise going into our op amp. We'll be using a non-inverting op amp in this application, uh, LM833 in this case dual op amp. There's about a million op amps out there so you just kind of pick whatever one you can find. Um, on our the feedback of the uh, op amp, we're going to have a 10k resistor, but we're going to have a uh, 4700 picofarad capacitor in parallel with our resistor. This is going to form a uh, RC uh, low pass filter, which is going to roll off the response at around 3388 hertz. So you can see how we can contour our uh, audio gain to uh, for the uh, audio speech band basically. Then on the uh, other feedback uh, impedance, we have a 100 ohm resistor in series with a 4.7 microfarad non-polarized capacitor. That will have a high pass node at around 339 hertz. So as you can see by adding uh, two components, two passive components, our uh, op amp will uh, basically boost all the audio between uh, 300 hertz and uh, 3000 hertz. It'll start to you know, roll off uh, anything below that or above that. On the output of the op amp, we usually have a, we can, there'll be a, there'll be a DC bias on it, I'll explain the, the bias later, but there'll be a DC bias on the output. So we want to um, block that with the capacitor. And in this example, or if we're feeding like an uh, audio amplifier or something, we'll have like a 10k audio taper potentiometer. And the resistance of that 10k and the uh, block DC blocking capacitor, we can also form another uh, form a little uh, high pass node here at 160 hertz. So it'll further reduce any rumble or anything on our signal. That's optional. Usually you want to, depending on your application, you don't want to have too low of an impedance because the op amps can't source that much current. On the VCC line on your, uh, oh I forgot, on a this will be at a ground. We'll, we'll have a bias that I'll explain later, but uh, you know, we'll ground near the uh, VEE usually. And the VCC will be at a plus nine. Um, we also have a little uh, small value uh, resistor. We have uh, 10 ohms in this case, and a, another 100 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor. This again forms an RC uh, network just to remove any noise that happens to be in our plus nine uh, bias line. Now for our active bias, which is required for that op amp to work off a single supply like this, you usually want this uh, bias provided by a resistor that's about 10 times your source impedance. So if we're using a 10k uh, resistor for our microphone, we'll make this resistor 100k. Now to bias the op amp, we're going to use a uh, an active stage on the uh, a dual op, op amp like this. This is just a voltage follower. We take our uh, 9 volts, split it in half through two uh, 10k resistors into the non-inverted input. And we add a bunch of 10 microfarad uh, capacitors just to get it really clean. So you have a really clean 4.5 volt uh, DC bias. And by using this active bias, it can uh, source and sync current, which makes our uh, our amplifier really stable. Normally you just see like, a, if you ever see a schematic, you just have these, just these two resistors feeding into the um, 
down the inversion stage. That's um, it, it works, but we can get a much better um, stability using this circuit. So the main keys that you want to follow when you're designing your uh, circuits, of course, is your low source impedance, low impedance, low noise. There's just no way around it. You want to use uh, quality components. These sh all your main uh, resistors should be like one percent metal films. Uh, nice high quality non-polarized capacitors with low leakage um, and of course you want to use the active bias if you can it's just a minimal number of components and it really stabilizes your circuit. You also want to alternate your gain stages so this is a non-inverting op amp configured right now so in our next stage we'd want to use the inverting if we need to add, add like another filter or if we have to use a audio amplifier with a selectable inputs we'd want to run it into the inverting stage so by going non-inverting inverting non-inverting inverting it kind of uh, it prevents any sort of feedback um, because we're using a um, parallel capacitor and a series capacitor it's gonna, we have to use the impedance of these networks to figure out our overall gain so it'd be the we'll call this one Z1, this one Z2. So our gain would be Z1 divided by Z2 plus one. Gain is the standard uh, voltage gain, you know, for an op amp. Uh, the equation's a little more involved, so I'll cover that in a different uh, video. But this kind of just gives you an idea uh, what you have to do. There's about a million other things to go over, but this is just the basics. This should get you started on a basic uh, audio amplifier, microphone amplifier circuit.